Hey, all you rad dads out there. So let's get started. So, so the first question, you know, in, in uh, do you know Nardwar? Yeah. You know, like, so his, his, he was, he was yet. Yeah. Yeah. His question is always the first question is the same as mine. Who are you? Who are you? Okay, cool. Hey, I'm Dave Reese. Um, wow, I can go, I, I, I guess I'll go back. Um, and in time here in the nineties, I played with SNFU. Um, I did all the epitaph, uh, recordings with the band. So, uh, from about 91, I joined until about 98 as when I was, uh, left the band. And, then, uh, during that time I was with bad religion for a long time as well, uh, drum teching. And we, we opened up for bad religion a lot on the, the stranger and fiction tour. Um, so I worked with those guys a lot too. So I was on the road a lot. And then, uh, from there I, I, I uh, I guess I had enough and then moved on and got into the television industry in Vancouver. So I worked there for about 10, 12 years uh, as an editor and worked my way up to supervising editor on, uh, on a bunch of different TV shows, The L Word, um, Andromeda, Stargate, like that, that kind of stuff, the, some of the sci-fi. Uh, and then uh, from there, I, I, I joined forces with a friend of mine. He started a company, a uh, market research company. Um, we don't really like that word so much, but more of a brand uh, strategy uh, agency. Uh, so I'm now, uh, I've been there for about 12 years now, and I work from home, live outside Montreal, uh, which is great. Moved here about four years ago, moved back here four years ago. And um, yeah, so so yeah, I work in branding and marketing now, and um, and I run a film team for that, a creative team. Uh, I've been married for 21 years, almost 21 years to my gorgeous wife, Louisa. And I have a 12-year-old 12, 12 son, Dylan, uh, who's just, he's the shit, man. <laughs> he's a good dude yeah life is good man things are good that's that's yeah. me in a nutshell you, you consider you consider yourself a rad dad well i mean by rad dad i guess uh, does that mean good dad i mean what does rad dad mean do okay, I, I, you know, maybe I, that's the question i had like so what from my perspective and so i've asked this question a few a few, few ways and when i asked this question uh from of, uh, kj from chicks dig it he yeah. he kind of took it the whole idea of like thinking of a rad dad as a dad that like parties and has fun all Part, like yes that. yeah i don't i don't really define it like that I, I define it as you know one that that takes time for himself and then follows his passions and through that the the modeling modeling of that following his passions kind of trickles down to their, their kids and then and inspires their children in that sense and is also there for them and and yeah. so it's, it's more just being a a a good dad, I guess. Yeah, yeah, no, that, that, involved that, that father. That that's where I was going with it, the rad side of me, because rad you can think of as as yeah, like yeah, like like a party, uh, skate, you know, like you're you're doing extreme stuff. Um, but no, I mean, really, a rad dad is is a present dad, someone someone who's there and, and wants to be a dad, and, and uh, will sacrifice things in your life that you might might pursue. You you might have to go in a little different direction or get more of a stable employment or something like that in order to to be there you know and spend the time so for me I mean I I became a dad later in life so I was I was 39 when my son was born so I'm an older parent so a lot of the stuff we I had I already had a, a, a career set up and a job and a house and wife and dog you know we had it all we had all all the stuff there ready you know because uh we we yeah we I wanted to be a dad very I mean I, I knew from when I was a kid I think I wanted to be a dad. Oh, yeah. I don't know why. <laughs> like, I mean, just always thought in my mind that eventually I'll, I'll become a dad at some point in my life. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to be not until I was 39, but um, but it worked out great. I mean, it's, it's, it's worked out great. And yes, I mean, I, I would consider myself a rad dad, I guess. I, I, I definitely um, spend time with my son and quality time and I try to show him stuff. And I'd, I'd, I'd like to leave stuff out in the, in the house. Like there's a piano right there, there's a guitar. I've got two drum sets in the, in the, the like I've got a full, the SNFU kit is in my <laughs> living room. You know, my wife's very patient and then I've got an electronic kit as well. My son likes playing that more, but I mean, so I've, I'd leave stuff out because I in, to expose him, but I don't want to push him into anything. So, I mean, you know, he likes playing drums. He doesn't love it and that's okay. That's cool, you know. So, so yeah. I mean, that's that's the. Uh, I love being a dad. I mean, I, I it's. It, I tell him that all the time. I, I say, you know, like I, I tell him I love him every day, and I tell him I love being his dad. I think it's an important one as well. I love being doing this, you know. So, it's. Uh, yeah. So, I don't know. I'm passionate about it. So I guess I guess I'm a rad dad. Nice rad. Like, uh, so what are some traits that you, you think make one a rad dad? You kind of mentioned a few of them, but. 
What are some what, other? What, sorry, sorry, what, what, sorry, I missed that. Some of the traits you you think okay. make one a rad dad. Yeah, I, th I think I think uh, yeah, the the being there and, and be wanting to be there for all the all the all the events that happen in a kid's life because you know there's my son's twelve now and I mean and there's always something different that's happening. I mean and at early ages, uh, I had him in soccer at the early as you could or soccer and um, little league baseball. I was the assistant coach on the soccer team. Um, you know what I mean? So so it's just just like being like doing activities with your kid. So I had to be there too because I was the coach, right? So, and trust me, playing soccer in Vancouver, in the, they play in the winter time, right? So it's, <laughs> it's raining, it's nasty, you're playing on like gravel fields. Um, so, so doing, you know, making the time to, to do stuff with your, with your son and, and uh, your child, um, I think is one of, the, one of the big ones. I think um, being vulnerable yourself and just being open and, and it's okay to, uh, like I, I think back to some some of the growing up, some of my era growing up, Gen, Gen X, um, and some of the stuff we heard when we were kids, especially as boys. I'm talking more boys, but uh, just some of the masculinity stuff that that was brought on, and some of the. So you really, I think now, um, being a rad dad, you, you, you're not gonna you're not gonna be um, doing that. You know, it's okay for kids to be themselves and be. Uh, they don't have to be tough and they don't have to be this, they don't have to be that. Just let them be who they are and accept it, I think is one of the big traits as well. Um, you know, just being open and understanding and just being there, you know? I mean, it's 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 so it's so easy to get caught up in work and, uh, you know, you, I gotta do this, I gotta build this, I gotta, you know, so I've seen, I've seen it with friends of mine where they're building a company or something and then the family suffers and it's hard to balance both, but finding that balance, I think is a big thing too for, for being, being rad. In the dad yeah, world. I agree. That, like that's a really common uh, a common answer with with this question is just just being there. And I, I just find it interesting to me, you know, from my perspective, and that it's this this it's almost universal in the sense that yeah, you know, of all like the forty some interviews that we've done here, it's like one of the things that kind of jumps out is just, just kind of be there and be present and and. Uh, yeah, it's just it's just interesting. It's it's really and, and and really 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 present too. I mean, even even for people who are working their ass off and they're they're off doing whatever. Um, if you've only got a bit of time to spend with your kid, I mean, just just be in. Like, don't you can't be on the you can't be like oh hold on you know it's, yeah. you can't you can't do that right. I mean, I know everyone's trying to multi multitask and everything, but if you only have so much time per day with your kid, just just be there for them for that because they're they're gonna they're gonna recognize that um you're there you're in you're like all right let's you know eye contact right uh, exactly. yeah so so yeah yeah I'm, I'm not surprised that that's a common one you know um yeah it's interesting too because i mean this whole generation of of dads is different you know it's funny this is kind of the first generation it seems and in, in my my experience anyways where dads are a lot more hands-on dads are a bit more more stay-at-home dads There's, i mean i know i know the world's changed a bit and the workplace and there's more women in, in work and then there's um you know but it's it's interesting that dads are more present now you know i don't well, know about I your experience but what do you what? i would agree why do you think that is is it something because you maybe you alluded to it a little bit i don't know i don't know i'm maybe just pulling at straws here but the idea of like uh well i don't i don't know what it was like when when you were growing up but is it just kind of like you just want to buck that trend that it used to be you don't want you know that toxic masculinity you're, you're just kind of tired of that is that um, yeah it's it's got, it's got to be it, it has to be something i mean this, this is why we made this documentary um by the way but it was uh, just because we saw this change in in, in men and then you know I, I just become a dad then um and we were still see, you're still seeing like advertising about the bumbling father who didn't you know doesn't know how to change a diaper and all that sort of stuff but i mean i think for us uh for me growing up i mean i i had the stereotypical you know, middle class kind of uh, upbringing. And my dad was a uh, university professor at the U of A. And uh, I mean, at close, we were close, me and my dad. And, and But it was still, there was a very different, he would come home from work and it's like, leave your dad alone. Leave your dad alone. Like bring him a drink or whatever, but leave him alone. That was kind of more of the, uh, whereas now, I mean, my son comes home from school and I'm like, hey, you know, uh, <laughs> he's like, leave me alone, leave yeah. me alone. Yeah, leave me alone. That's it, right? <laughs> We've shifted too far, man. Yeah. Um, but so, so I don't, I don't know if it was just we saw that and we wanted to to stop it, and um, or the fact of the 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 world has changed, and and um, 
you know, like uh, for, for me, I was, I was, I was um, a stay at home dad for the first year, which was rad. I mean, that was rad. You know, I mean, I, I, I just was finishing a contract for a film thing I was working on. And then that was done. And it seemed like the film was industry in Vancouver was kind of dipping out. I'm talking about like 2008. And uh, so I, I was sort of between contracts. My wife had a gig. She was working in film as well. So she was the breadwinner out working and I was the stay at home dad with this baby um, for a year. And it was, it was awesome. <laughs> I mean, but, but even then it was still like, you're going to little play groups or whatever with your kid and you're the only guy there, you know, a lot of the time. I think, I think even now it's switched from, there's more men at this kind of stuff, but um, so I, I, I don't know, there's some, something happened, something changed with, with men and they wanted to, wanted to be more present and wanted to be, uh, maybe something their, their father wasn't, something they, they weren't getting. Um, so, I mean, it's a great thing. It's a great thing because that can only do good in the world, having a good dad, you know what I mean? I mean, it's, it means a lot, you know, if, you, if you're not connected with your parent or if, you know, um, yeah, it's just, it makes for a different life. So, so yeah. That's, and, you that's, know, the, the research, so it's not saying I'm like a researcher in it or anything, but yeah. you kind of, kind of come across these things about, you know, research showing about the importance of your par parents being there and the, you know, yeah. this positive, you know, father figure for sure. Um, so you, you kind of talked about, I was going to ask you about the documentary later, but now that you kind of brought it up. So was there a, like an intent behind the documentary? You kind of. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was interesting. We, 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 uh, I started working from this company, The Sound, uh, with a, a friend of mine, Ian, who was running it. And uh, we'd both become new dads at the time. We were working in branding and marketing and we were, we're doing stuff. Uh, not, yeah, I, mean, I mean, not really too much stuff about dads, whatever, but we were just, more, you're aware of all sorts of advertising and marketing that's going on. Um, anyway, so we're seeing, we're seeing stuff. We were doing a project for, I can't remember who it was, but we're still seeing that bumbling father sort of thing. And we're like, because we're trying to give brands advice about how to how to get it right, their communication, and, and we're like, this, you can, no, 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 no. I'm a dad now. I, I I know how to change diapers. I'm doing all that stuff in the night. I'm doing, you know, you can't you get you can't market to to people like that. So so um so Ian he had an idea. He saw. I mean, right at the time, I my son was born. He was about two years old, um, and my dad passed away. That was the other thing. It was this weird cycle of life happening for me. So I was going through this kind of like elated to have a son. And then, then my father got sick. And so I went through this, luckily my son got to meet my dad and uh, you know, it was, but it was an interesting time. And, and I think uh, a friend of mine who was, I was working with at the time, he had two young daughters as well. And he was looking at, at this whole thing and he's like, this is really interesting how dads have changed. This is, this is, this is a new thing. We got to do it like a documentary or something. Like, let's make a film about this. So we, we decided to make a, you know, to take out some ads. I mean, this was like print ads. We were posting in like community centers, or we made a little video calling out, you know, just, just stories about fatherhood. Like, it, and, and, you know, it was really, it didn't have to be uh, anything in particular. It could be anybody from any, everyone has a dad. So, so we just thought it'd be interesting to talk to people about their story of fatherhood. That was, that was really it. It was one question, you know, we just wanted to answer and we thought, why don't we just make a little film and see what happens? So we did this video diary project. So it was all self shot. So we just give them cameras. So we, we started looking for dads and we put up ads in London and New York and Vancouver and um, Europe, like just all over the place. Um, and then we had all these people submitting sort of videos and, and wanting to be a part of the film and uh, which is really interesting. So, so suddenly we had all these, all these guys and their stories and it's like, it was really hard to pick whose story is, you know, some, some were traumatic and some were happy and some were never met their father or some, some were, you know, all, 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 all over the map. So, so we ended up narrowing it down to three dads in, in Vancouver, two in New York and two in London. And uh, so we sent them cameras you know, eventually we'd kind of, kind of get the whole thing dialed in. There was no money involved. They're, they're not being paid or anything. It was just pure sort of exploratory documentary style and rough too, because they're filming. So I had to sort of teach them how to use this camera. And then uh, we gave them cameras for about four or five months and just to film their lives, like just film your life as being in it. So it could be, you know, we had uh, gay, gay dads in, in New York city and, going through a divorce and, and, and he was having to do a second parent adoption for his son. So he was capturing that 
moment of time, which was fascinating. And then we had, you know, uh, a younger dad in London just turned 30 and just kind of going through his life, having a daughter. And we had um, like an older dad who already had four or five kids. So it's a real walk, different walks of life. Um, and in, we, so we thought, well, let's just see what happens. And we sent all these cameras and um, we started getting the footage back and, you know, it ended up being like, 60, 70 hours of, of footage. So I just took it all and uh, you know, I had a team help a little bit, but really it was primarily me just digging through this stuff because I, I was passionate about this. I was like, I was, I'm a new dad, just lost my dad. Like, this is like, I'm not there. I was, wow, talk about a perfect project to land in my lap right, right then. So, so I started watching this footage and um, it was just, uh, it was emotional. It was, I learned a ton about being, how to be a father and uh, these guys are amazing. These these dads that we got, and they filmed their lives, and they just opened up, and they um, so we we ended up um, putting it together. It's about forty five minutes long, and um, we're like, holy shit! And I remember screening it for our company, and I was like, holy shit! I don't know if why would anybody like this? Well, like why would anybody want to watch a bunch of guys talking about being a dad? Um, and then for me I was a dad so for me I thought well I'm you know I, I can relate to this a lot and then I played it for a bunch of people and I realized oh everybody relates to this everybody fucking relates to these guys and their struggles that are going through it's not all I was I asked for like the good the bad and the ugly like just show us everything don't don't hold back and don't make it all perfect because it's not we know it's not yeah. <laughs> we know. Uh, anyway so we made this film and uh we got it and we thought Holy shit, man! Maybe maybe we can get this get this out because everyone loved it. All our clients, it was just incredible, right? Everyone, the, the emotional reaction to it. It's pretty heavy. It's pretty heavy. There's a lot of, you know, a lot of tears in it, and there's some funny shit too because there's kids, you know. It's uh, it's uh, it's all of the above. But anyways, we ended up shopping it around to a whole bunch of local broadcasters, and they were all like, "Nah, it was video diaries, self shot." So they were like, no, we've never really done anything like that before. And then eventually uh, somebody at the CBC at the documentary channel saw it and got a link to it from the um, hot docs festival thing. Um, anyway, so they, they picked it up. They grabbed it instantly. They were like, we'll take it. We'll license that for the next seven years. And uh, the film went on to, it premiered 2013 on Father's Day and CBC prime prime time nationwide uh which was like holy shit i can't believe <laughs> you know because we were really just making a film for ourselves really and then it's those are always the best ones though the ones that uh so it ended up being on cbc and then we ended up sell uh not selling it but licensing it to about 17 countries in the world so like countries like israel and new zealand and china uh <laughs> place in latin america like it's <laughs> subtitled and there's uh incredible you know i mean it's not like you don't you don't make a lot of money in documentary film but it's still i just wanted it to be seen yeah you know and i think a lot of people saw it and they uh they think it should be a prerequisite to watch before you become a dad <laughs> it's a great resource to look at i think they even use it in ubc um as uh in some of their research uh and some of their studies they asked to use that film and in uh, some of their when they're teaching you know about it so it's at that university um anyway so this little film turned into this thing and uh and it was really fun to make man and i made a follow-up to it about um two years ago so we kind of nine years later it kind of so that was really cool to see these guys and their kids are all big and um yeah it was really really fun but i can include a link to it in the in this uh yeah I've, I've seen it i saw it on cbc uh okay cool so for sure and i I don't know why it's taken me so long to interview you, but like it made that connection because I knew you were involved with it because I knew you were involved in like uh, TV and stuff. Because did, did you like do TV stuff with Brent too? Because I know he, him and his wife are uh, Brent and yeah, I have an email, PayPal, uh, you know, email kind of <laughs> pen yeah, cool. that's about hockey and stuff. And so he always kind of mentions the projects that he works on yeah yeah no it's funny because brent and i both left snfu at the same time it was the same right. last show we had and uh it's funny that we both ended up we didn't intentionally sort of i mean it just ended up both in, in television and uh i i, I was in the post-production side and he went into composing but no i've never it's funny we've never worked together we tried a few times like he sent me a few of his um cds and just some scores that he was doing uh, and i was trying to merge it with the stuff we were doing but it was it was just, it just didn't match up for some reason. But uh, I mean, God, I would love to work with 
with with Brent anytime, man. I'm still in touch with Brent. He's a great, great guy. Mina, Mina as well, really super talented filmmaker. Um, but yeah, we we sort of crossed paths at festivals or things like that, but never, um, yeah, never worked together, never, never collaborated. And yeah. Anyway, so like you know, that's why I really enjoy that. Like that you said that you kind of did it more like that. That bumbling it. That's kind of one of the th reasons that Rad Dads, you know, we have at like our core as like the motivators that. I got kind of sick. I get sick of like that, you know, whole sitcom type, you know, convention. Right. Dads can't do anything. Yeah. Or like the the like you mentioned already, the bumbling idiots. You know, they're, they're nothing without you know their their wife or partner around. It's like you know, yeah. no way. Like there's some pretty rad dads out there, and we work hard too. And like, yeah, it's I, it's almost like a lashing out or like kind of a a snap back to say no way like this the stance that we're taking and like our whole idea is modeling positive parenthood and we, we try to yeah. hold dads by what the things that we do and like you know taking that time like i mentioned for yourself we're also taking that time to 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 say you know what i'm doing a pretty good job yeah yeah i make mistakes along the way but you know yeah. overall I, I yeah pretty good and i don't think we tend to do that maybe even as males and enough uh and you know it's 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 hopefully doing our little positive part to kind of influence that change that you've already talked about is, you know, we see this shift uh, yeah. in, 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 in parenting and, and fatherhood and, and stuff like that. So, yeah, yeah, I definitely like, you know, to get some more of our listeners slash watchers slash kind of people that follow us on social media to be aware of that documentary. And uh, yeah, for sure. I mean, we, we've just said the licensing deal just went up for CBC and, and we're, we're still working on US, uh, trying to get it in the US. And uh, so now we just got a, a link that you can you can watch. It's public, public link now. Okay. So, yeah, we'll so it's out there. More, yeah, I'll, I'll send you the link and, and include it in wherever you like, man. But uh, yeah, it's it's still it's still relevant. It's still, you know what I mean? I, I thought those guys were amazing. I, I mean, yeah, like I said, I learned so much just watching these guys and the dedication they put in. And like, I mean, it was really... Some of them are pretty, pretty, it's pretty heavy, man. And, uh, but they're really close with their kids now. You know what I mean? When I did the follow-up film, uh, it's amazing, amazing kids. The kids really turned out uh, well for a lot, of, a lot of the dads in that because, because they put in the time yeah. and they, uh, you know what I mean? I'm sure it's got to correlate with that because they were so present. And then, you know, like there's the one dad in there in, in New York, he actually uh, unfortunately passed away at the beginning of the year, uh, Greg Larkin, he was a much older dad. And he was second time with his family around and he homeschools them all. So, and they were, uh, you know, in New York City and the kids all are like, his sons are like in ballet, like heavy duty, like ballet and playing like the cello. They, they're all string instant and they played in the second documentary. And I'm like, holy shit. <laughs> His kids are talented, man. But he did the whole homeschooling thing again. So what a what a devotion, right? To uh, to your kids to take that on. I mean, right now we're in this crazy pandemic that's happening right now. And you know, in March when this first kicked in, I, I remember it was Friday the thirteenth, and in March, uh, and school was shut here in in Quebec. And um, you know, it was supposed to be shut for two weeks. You know, that was the big, all right, two weeks, crazy. Oh, all right, let's do this. And then, um, but you know, you know, school was shut, right? So for out here, it was shut, they, they shut it for the whole year. Uh, and you saw um, parents going through, suddenly your kids are at home all day and you're having to take on that teaching role, plus work, plus, you know, just do this hustle, right? Um, and people started really, it's, you know, it's, it's, it's so hard. People, you know, like your mental health starts to, because we're not, when it comes to teaching, you know, that's, that's all, well, you're a teacher. I mean, you know, uh, all, all the praise to, to teachers, man, because it's, you know, when this happened and kids were at home, it was hard and stressful. You're feeling like you're not doing enough and your kid's going to fall behind and you're, ah, you know, but I think for us personally, we, we just, you know, luckily for us, we just have one kid. My wife's at home. Uh, she's amazing. So we just did as much as we could and we're okay with that. You know what I mean? Like it was okay. It was okay. It was, it's okay. You guys, this is a unique time, man. So, but, but all, you know, big shout out to teachers, man, because you know, that was, uh, that was interesting. Suddenly people were full on full-time parents <laughs> all through the school year. Uh, yeah, it's tough, man. Like I, I'm a high school teacher. So uh, for sure it was, it was, you know, my son's eight. 
So yeah, okay. <laughs> I love that tree. You know, here I'm teaching my students on this side of the table, and he's over there trying to learn. You know, yeah, great wow. stuff. And it, it, he was his was Spanish bilingual too, so I, okay. I didn't speak Spanish at all. So I was like, uh, there was a moment wow. where I got a little bit more than frustrated for sure. But well, well, pretty pretty awesome. cool to have. <laughs> pretty cool to have a teacher at home though you know what i mean you are a teacher so i mean I, but i get it you know you're, you're <laughs> you still have to do that and you know but it was a tough time for everybody it was a really interesting time for parents i thought during a lot of that stuff and there's interesting debates about people wanting to when they did open schools and they did you know some people were like whoa i don't i don't you know i'd rather have a choice you know and when it came down to do you want to homeschool or do you want to put your kid back in school with masks on and the whole thing um you know, it was an interesting kind of debate people were having. Some people were like, yeah, I need to get my kid out of the fucking house, man. I can't <laughs> yeah. take this shit. And then there was other people who were like, no, I'm not going to put my kid in risk of this. You know what I mean? So, but then there was a balance of like, do your kids need to be social and they need to be out. And this is where, you know, for me, I mean, I learned everything in the schoolyard. <laughs> I mean, like everything, that that interaction, that time. So, so for us, you know, we were pretty hesitant about the school thing, but then we were like, okay, let's just be as diligent as possible. Um, we live outside of Montreal, so we're luck luckily not right in the city center. But we, we thought it was a calculated risk that we had to take. But I mean, talk about a you know interesting time, man, uh, for yeah. parents. You know, this is I, I've got other friends who have kids who've grown up, they moved out. Everybody's like, man, I don't, I don't envy you guys who have kids in school right now. This is weird, so, you know. Okay, so what are some of the most rewarding aspects of being a dad for you? Oh wow, oh man, it's it's, you know, you know what's funny about being a dad and being a parent in general is that you're you're in this, you're so in the moment of things. You know, that, that you, so there's things when there's, a, you know, the baby years go by, like it's a blur, right? Like you don't even remember <laughs> half the stuff, but I mean, the, the, and then you get to the, you know, where my son's 12 now. So it's a very different time. And, and you go through all these, you know, you get through one thing and then it's something else, you know what I mean? With your kids. So it's, you know, for my kid, he's just, uh, he's in grade seven now. So he's, he's going through puberty. He's like a little teenager now. So. <laughs> so uh but which is challenging on a different front but also incredibly rewarding because of the conversations you can have and the you know the i'm teaching you all about finance right now we're trying to <laughs> you know money man like where's money come from and so that's really fun just that that stuff but i mean really the rewarding stuff is just the i don't know but just see it i mean it, you know when you see your kid do something and do something uh pull something off, get the grade they wanted or pull up, learn an instrument or um, succeed in whatever it is that they're doing. And that, that, that feeling of like, that you're just so proud, man. It's just so proud. You, it's ridiculous, you know? I mean, it's, it's the level of it. You know, you have kids who are in sports and everything, right? Like my, my, my son, uh, you know, when he does something in sports or something, you, you're just so proud, you know? You're just like, it's just, you're trying to contain it. <laughs> inside because it's uh it really is remarkable but just seeing your kid go through life and then they're um turning out good and they're they're good people and they're they're kind my, my son's really empathetic uh, he's always has been you know and I always thought that was such a great trait or a great great characteristic to have you know if some kids hurt or he's the first one over there to help you know what I mean so he's always he's just always been like that I don't know why I just you know, where'd that come from? But so you see your kid and they go through these things and, and you're just the pride that you have. And yeah, I think that's the really rewarding thing for me is just seeing that. And, you know, and, and every once in a while, even now, he's still like, love you back. You know what I mean? Like, just give you a big hug or give you a big, and it's just, it's just great. And seeing your kids happy and uh, for the most part, I mean, you're not always happy. Things are tough. You're going through all sorts of stress, but just seeing your kid get through it and have a decent childhood is just rewarding. And that's, that's I think, the big one for me. Nice. Nice. Yeah, I like, you know, I, I'm a, his hockey coach and I've been coaching <laughs> since he's, you know, been four. And, you know, and it's going in that first goal, right? It's like that, that moment. And it feels so good. Like, I, you know, it was everyone can experience that. Uh, yeah so yeah kind of put it in words right but 
Yeah. 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 Funny, my, my kid with sports, it was funny. He did soccer. And like I said, I was, you know, sports, not, not because I am a big sports guy myself, but I just thought this is what, you know, this is what kids, boys want to do. And, you know, I want to make sure he's up on all this stuff. So, but he did soccer. He did, he did uh, little league and he did both for about four years. And then he didn't want to do them anymore. And I was like, oh man, this is, this is those things you go through where you're like, huh, what should I force him to do this? Or should I <laughs> make a mistake here? And, and, and again, but, I, but kids teach you so much about like, you know, uh, just, just about like listening and, and really paying attention to what they want to do and why they're doing that. And, you know, so, so with my son, it was really interesting to learn that he doesn't, he doesn't like team sports. He's not a team sport kid. So he plays, he's like karate, tennis, skiing. That's the stuff he gravitates towards. So I was trying to like, oh, you got to be on a team and do all that, you know, and it's like, didn't want to do it. And then it was like, now we put him in this stuff and he totally gravitates and he's having fun and it's enjoyable. And it's, I'm like, okay, cool. So you have to ebb and flow with being a dad too. You know what I mean? You got to really got to maneuver and try not to, this is what I did. So this is going to work for you. Like, what, what does that mean? You know what I mean? Like, that's, you know, it's sometimes that's the case. Sometimes that's the case, but not always, you know, some kids are different, right? So you, you gotta, you gotta go with it. You gotta go with the flow. And yeah, so, so many kind of, you know, not so many, but there's dads out there or parents out there that just want them to be just me, 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 them, right? And I try not to be like that too. And sometimes I catch myself in you know, you know, I, I love my son to be into to, to punk rock music and like the, like have similar interests. Oh, yeah. But at the same time, it's like, why am I doing this? No, like this is like, but I want him to have appreciation of music. I don't, okay, I don't care if you, but pick something yeah. you're passionate about. And so yeah. that becomes really important to like introduce them to various things too. And so that's yeah. also kind of one of the, the things that we try to do, you know, at least when I, when I plan events for the Rad Dads thing is like, okay, I want my son or friends or children to have different experiences. So, you know, yeah. like a punk rock show for kids, like, you know, yeah. like, and, you know, so we, we try to kind of, you know, skateboard, we did a skateboard thing for kids and, um, yeah. and hopefully if, if they're into it, great. If not, then you know, not, not really exactly, cool. man. but find something yeah. that you really like to do, you know, that's you know, find something. Cool. Yeah. I mean, you know what, you know what I mean? Like my son, you know, what it, interesting thing with my son, I mean, also is um, for us just trying to get pregnant was a difficult thing. That's part of the reason we were later in life. I was 39. My wife was 41. We'd gone through some IVF treatments we'd done, you know, so it was, it's, it's funny. You, you go through your teen years and your twenties and, you know, people can get pregnant very, very quickly and very, you know, without, oh shit, you know. Um, but then when you're older and you're like, okay, let's do this, it could be difficult, right? It can be a difficult thing that, and all of a sudden doesn't happen sometimes. So we'd gone through all sorts of, uh, yeah, back then too. I mean, it was pretty, pretty newer treatments, IVF and things like that. And my, uh, we managed to get pregnant and then my wife miscarried and uh, we just sort of went through this back and forth we wanted to be parents really bad and we were uh you know so we were sort of at a weird crossroads there and then you know um we started looking into adoption we were like i wonder you know what, what about adoption we started looking at your odds because again once once you hit your 40s for especially for women uh doing ivf and treatments like that the the odds try to start to tape, taper off quite a bit so um anyway so and if you looked at the odds, and you know, when, when you're older and you want to be a parent, you, you start playing the odds, right? You're looking at odds, but uh, the odds of adoption were much higher and, you know, the rate of that. So, so we, um, yes, yeah, so we started looking into, into adoption after a few rounds of IVF because it's also that kind of treatment's hard on your body and uh, for my wife. And uh, anyway, so we looked into adoption and uh, we were looking all over the, all over the world uh, for, for it, it didn't matter, race, uh, gender. We just wanted a newborn you know, and to, to get a newborn, like in a, in a government adoption is like a 10 year waiting list. That that's sort of like a, you know, just a, a adoption kids that need it. Um, so we went through an agency and we, um, yeah, we were sort of, you know, it's funny, you have to go through all this social worker and, and making sure you're, you're good parents and you're going to be potentially good parents. And there's a whole lot of stuff you need to do first. And they, you create a booklet or whatever, and they, they match you to um, you know, there, if there's somebody who's, who need, needs, can't, can't deal with their situ situation, then they, they select you or whatever. So we, we got selected really quick by this couple. 
that was uh, and it was a, and it, the, the interesting thing was we were looking all over like like I said internationally, but uh, somebody finally said to us, "What what about just local adoption? Like what what why don't you just adopt in Vancouver?" And I was like, "Oh, that's weird." <laughs> oh. like, what what if you run into these? You know, you're <laughs> thinking all these thoughts, right? That are uh, and also the whole the whole thought of adoption as well for me. As, as, as a man and for like just being a dad, I was like, oh God, like what if, what if you don't bond? Like what did happen? You know that, that ah, I just, oh, you know, I was, I was a bit scared, you know what I mean? I didn't know what to, what to think anyway. So we, we ended up being selected by this couple that wanted to, I, that, that couldn't, uh, you know, um, look after their child. So, so then we met them when they were about seven months pregnant and um, did the, all these interviews. They came to our house. They you know, every, everything really great, great couple. And, um, they, uh, yeah, she was seven months pregnant. They, and they sort of selected us to be the, uh, so we were like, holy shit, like, all right, this is, this is happening. And I mean, it was funny because the whole, whole process took about nine months from start to finish by the time of a pre pregnancy. But we, um, my son was born in, uh, at Lionsgate hospital in, in North Vancouver. And I was working at North shore studios at the time. So it was like, what are the odds of being born in North Van and the hospital that's our hospital? Uh, so he was born and we adopted him at two days old. Um, and the, the bonding part, uh, we went into the hospital and they, you know, the, for the first time you're, you know, here's this child and they put it in your arms and it took about, about four seconds to, for that bond to be <laughs> so strong. You know what I mean? It was incredible, man. It was, it was a, so my, my son, yeah, he's, he's, he's adopted local adoption in, in Vancouver and um, yeah, really, really amazing. I mean, ad adoption, I can't say enough good things about adoption because it's, it's like, uh, uh, you know, this was, in this case was a couple, but they couldn't, they couldn't do it. They just couldn't, couldn't do it. Couldn't be parents. Couldn't, it was the wrong time. It was just all wrong. We were dying to be parents. And then you have a kid that, that needs, a home yeah. so adoption worked out great for us and oddly enough he sort of looks like me <laughs> <laughs> anyways yeah it's probably going a bit deep there but that that's how you know so it's so it's interesting with our son that's again a, a d interesting dynamic is uh nature versus nurture and and that sort of stuff so you're 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 when you think to yourself like well i i was like that as a kid and so now there's a lot of nurture uh, going on, but there's also nature stuff. There's stuff that, you know, we've still been in touch with his, his birth parents and um, he knows he's adopted and we wanted to make sure that that was never going to be a mystery. And we've got all the contact info. I mean, that, that connection or that, it, 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 you know, dissipates a little bit over the years, you know, at first they wanted photos and you know, all sorts of stuff, but you can only imagine after so long it's, you know, um, for them, you know, just sort of check in and make sure everything's great. And it was so, so they were, I think, relieved and just happy that, it, that it's worked out. But we've always, you know, every year or so we'll connect or something like that. But um, anyway, so that's an interesting dynamic as a dad as well, having, having that and not seeing things in him that I'm like, that's on me. <laughs> this, this fucking smart shit with the math and science going on. That's not for me, man. But he can play the drums. <laughs> so there go, there go. So it was the nurture part, yeah. So it's really, really interesting, man. It's 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 uh, it's uh, it's been a, quite a ride, but uh, wouldn't change a thing. That's great. Uh, last two questions are for the for, uh, uh, second last one. Did you have any fears being a dad? Oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah. Just just um, just that you're gonna. I don't know, mess it up or something. I mean, you're just going, you're, you're, I don't know, you have that pressure of like, um, you're not gonna be good at it or something. I mean, I, I think going into being parents, friends of ours are always like, oh, you guys are gonna be great parents. You guys are gonna be, you're so wanna be parents, you know? So I think we wanted it really bad. Uh, so when it happened, we embraced it big time and we still do, we're, we're, we're tight, we're a tight family. Um, so, but you, I think there's always that underlying fear of like, I'm doing this wrong. There's a book, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm, I, you know, I don't know if I'm saying the right things or if I'm, you know, especially right now, <laughs> you know, this is like preteen age and you're, there's all sorts of changes going on. And you're like, wow, because I, I didn't hear the stuff from my parents. So, so we're having that talk. Well, I mean, for one, you're talking about technology. I mean, like 
kids have, uh, you know, it means access to anything, you know, YouTube, you just punch in anything. So, you know, I mean, God, you know, when we were kids, it was like, yeah, <laughs> you had to get a magazine and go to, you know, like it was, uh, but now it's just, so, so it's a different world. You have to talk a lot about, a lot, a lot about that stuff. And it just seems, you, you just feel like you're just saying the wrong shit. And, but really the fact is, again, going back to being vulnerable and being, it's okay to be wrong. This is how you learn. You have to make mistakes in order to learn. So, so my, my fears with that, that stuff and just, um, you know, being able to provide and make sure I had enough money and make sure I'd, just that stuff as well. Um, being stable and can I, am I able, some of the fears was like, am I able to do like a nine to five job and like be happy doing that? And well, it all balances with having a kid and, um, you know, so some of the sacrifices I, I took there, um, but it's all worked out great. Um, and then other fears you have as a parent, as, as a dad is that, you know, you, and it's weird, it's that inherent thing in all parents, I think, is you always think something's gonna happen to your kid. You always have this fucking thought, you know, did I, you know, I don't know, just whatever it is, some random shit, but I think that's what it keeps you on your toes. These thoughts that sometimes enter your head of, I don't know, it's just anything. It's anything now. You think they're gonna be hit by a car. You think they're gonna, oh my, you know, uh, riding their bike off skateboard. You're like, oh, you know, but they're they're fine. They're, they're uh, you know, they're, they're resilient. <laughs> so yeah yeah. yeah um yeah just like more of a like a personal thing like do you like what's your current project you talked a little bit about kind of what you do you know yeah for you to brag kind of what you're you're doing now yeah so 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 the stuff i'm doing now what am i working on now yeah yeah i mean right now i mean like, like i said i work for an agency called the sound and we're um we're doing a lot of uh in, in, in marketing stuff for our own company and pushing out films we're doing um you know, we just did a, a little thing called the, the the sound of quarantine, which was sort of like six months into quarantine, where I just took a bunch of people from our company. It was like, who wants to film some of this, document some of this stuff? And I had my son documenting it first because I was like, you should document this. This is this is pretty interesting. But then he he did it for like a few days and then just stopped. You know, but but he sort of tees up the film and it's again, it's just sort of a shot on smartphones with people in our company talking about being in quarantine and just the real life and a lot of it a lot of it's parents and, and uh the there's quite a few moms in this one and they're talking about the struggles of having to work from home and being a parent and being a mom and you know because moms are fascinating as well you know i mean moms are the best so um so yeah we captured that um and then we we're working on um you know we're, we're always um we're working on stuff like uh, future development films we're trying to predict stuff that's gonna be happening in in the uh in the world in 2030 and past that. Um, and then then we work also a lot on projects with the, like I said, we're doing a lot of Google and Facebook stuff right now. And uh, it's an interesting time to be doing this kind of work though. Some brands are doing really well and some are not doing well at all. So so it's, you know, some are doing too well, you know, alcohol <laughs> brands are doing great right now. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, so I run a team there. I've got a team and uh, uh, filmmakers. I've got uh, a couple in Chicago and a few in New York. Um, I work from home just outside Montreal, so I'm, I'm here kind of doing this a lot of the time. So I'm, I'm producing and, and um, teeing up a lot of these film ideas and creative ideas. And then I have a team that kind of goes off and executes and, and makes them. Uh, and like I said, some we do for external audiences, um, some of our own films. We, we actually did a film called Fear uh, a couple of years ago about modern day fear. What, what are people, and it was funny in that film, nobody, not one person mentioned a pandemic. <laughs> <laughs> a virus you know what I mean but they were just talking about security and privacy and all that sort of you know you're being watched and you're being you know that kind of fear you know um anyway so so we're yeah we're I'm really lucky I've got a really cool creative job that I can uh and I think my son sees it as well and comes over and gives me input or he's he's great at picking music for for stuff for you know he'll come and listen to something and be like you should try this song you know um so he's yeah so that that's kind of cool but yeah that's what that's what I'm up to man and um and just looking after him and getting him to junior high school. That's what he's in now. And uh, trying to keep up with all the swimming and tennis and all that stuff that he's up to. And, and also, I mean, you know, what, you know what's funny right now? He's, he's really into, um, he wanted to learn how to play Texas Hold'em. <laughs> so we play a lot of cards. We do a lot of like blackjack and Texas Hold'em. And this is part of that thing where I'm teaching him finance, you know, cause we don't want really to play for money here. <laughs> But I, I uh, but it's just funny, they, they gravitate towards all sorts of things. So 
so yeah, I balance my time with uh, just family. We're like I said, close family. We we do a lot together. We just hang out, and I work kind of you know like nine to five. You know that's what I, what I do, and I do it from home. And uh, typically, I would normally be traveling a little bit right now as well. Like I, I do trips down to New York or Chicago, maybe every couple months, and then Vancouver sometimes, perhaps London, because um, we have offices there, and we have an office in Mumbai, and. Um, so we're trying to grow this business as well and, and keep that going, but I think it's a good balance, man. It's got a, uh, it's just enough for me to, uh, yeah, to feel like I'm still creative and, and doing interesting things and also have a lot of time for my son uh, and working from home too. When you're with your kid comes home and it, I mean, it's, we're together all the time. Yeah. You know? So, yeah. Do you miss playing live music? I do. I'm playing tonight. I'm going to jam tonight. Actually, I jam with a bunch of dudes out here. Uh, you know, I can't stop playing music. So, so I go and. Uh, but I, I playing live. Huh, I still have dreams about playing live music. <laughs> and it's funny. It's, it's, these are like anxiety dreams. I think because you're always there's always something fucking up at the show. <laughs> you know, like where's my stick bag or you know some things like I don't know. There's always and it's usually an SNFU show. I still dream about playing an SNFU and then uh, having you know so. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I don't really crave to get with a, a bunch of people and play live now. I mean, I did a few little things here over the last couple of years, but I don't know. I just like jamming. I just like going to play music with people, and I still still have to do it. Um, I like playing drums by myself as well, doing that stuff, but it's really nothing beats playing with other musicians. And so I found a bunch of guys out here that love, love to play, and they're great. And uh, so we just fuck around and, and uh, still play music, but... But uh, yeah, I mean, the live stuff, damn, you know, I still love seeing live music, you know. I took my son to uh, last year, um, back when concerts were happening, <laughs> they did the, uh, the Punk 77 tour out here. It was Bad Religion and Pennywise oh, nice. sort of head headlining the thing. So I took him, it's kind of like his first show, you know, it was a couple of years ago. So he was young and I hit, took him and his buddy. And uh, so we managed to get um, a friend of my Paget was doing. He's the promoter on the show, Paget Williams, and uh, he he got us, you know, backstage, whatever. So we were hanging out back there, and we were Pennywise was about to go on, so we're standing there, and then um, Jim, right, singer Pennywise, Jim, uh, comes over and grabs my son and his friend, and brings him right out, and uh, gives him a mic, you know, and then they were just singing backups for uh, you know in front of you know, 10,000, oh, 15,000 right. people. So cool. Yeah, that's so cool. his mind was just blown, like, gah, 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 gah. and I'm like, hey, it's not like this every show, dude. This is not how it <laughs> works every show. But but it's uh, it was cool to see that that uh, that it, it can get into that sort of thing, you know what I mean? So, because I've, I've been, like you said, I mean, I've been, I've been pushing like punk rock on him since day one and, and rock and the Ramones and Beastie Boys. <laughs> so he knows all that stuff. He knows it all really well, man. And his, his biggest band right now is Green Day and like the Foo Fighters. Like he's, he's really into that sort of stuff. But so anyways, that's uh yeah. Yeah. Cool. I don't know. Last, yeah. last, last question here. Any, sure, words, was, any words of wisdom to any, any dads listening to this? Oh, words of wisdom. Wow. Just, you know, again, just reiterating and, and going back to just being, um, be there, be present, enjoy it, man. Enjoy the time. Like, and, and don't, don't, uh, I think a big thing also is just don't be so hard on yourself about it. Cause it's really easy to say after it's back for me, but I mean, you're, I think you're really judging yourself and you're, you're hard on yourself and you're, you're going to go through struggles. You're going to fuck things up. You're going to, um, and that's okay. Don't be so like, you're going to look back and I mean, the life's short. You know what I mean? And really, we're, we're in the day to day now. But I mean, really, in the grand scheme of things, it's short. And enjoy the moments, man, because, you know, if you're sweating all the small stuff all the time, and you're just, you know, stressed out. That's, that's no way to no way to be, you know, so enjoy the moments and go easy on yourself. It's okay. All right. Thanks, Dave. No worries, man. That was fun. Appreciate the conversation. Appreciate your time. Yeah, man.